I picked this extracted tooth because, as you can see from the x-rays taken buccolingually and mesiodistally, the chamber is quite calcified and has what appears to be a pulp stone taking up a good portion of the chamber. I make my initial opening into the pulp chamber using a high-speed number four surgical length round burr. The burr is placed more or less into the central fossa of the tooth. I will be making a triangular opening with the mesiobuccal angle under the mesiobuccal cusp, the distobuccal angle close to the central fossa, and the palatal angle generally in the center of the large palatal cusp. I know I can make a depth cut of 7 millimeters without coming close to perforating through the floor of the pulp chamber, but I still take my time blowing away the debris produced by the burr. At approximately 5 to 6 millimeters of depth, I noticed what appears to be the first opening through the roof of the chamber in the mesiobuccal aspect of the axis opening, as well as an opening on the distopalatal portion of the roof. I proceed to remove more of the overlying roof and the mesiobuccal opening becomes quite pronounced. Please be aware that this is not the mesiobuccal canal. It is merely an opening through the roof that is aligned with the mesiobuccal portion of the floor. Once the hole is large enough for the head of the bird to go through, I pull up the rest of the roof, being careful not to gouge the axial walls of the pulp chamber. Exploring the floor of the pulp chamber, I am able to pick away a detached pulp stone from the distopalatal floor of the chamber. Sometimes these pulp stones adhere quite strongly to the floor and have to be drilled away. However, this one detached easily. Further exploration of the pulp floor lets me know exactly where the mesiobuccal, distobuccal, and palatal orifices are. To see them more clearly, I extend the axis opening a bit with the number four high-speed surgical length round bar and recheck my pathway to each canal orifice with the Explorer. Please note that it took several extensions with the round burr to be fully satisfied with the access I had to the mesiobuccal canal and any other canals that might be in the immediate vicinity. Unlike the distobuccal and palatal orifices that appear to be reasonably round and simple in anatomy, the mesiobuccal portion of the floor suggests more than the simple anatomy of a single round orifice. After irrigation with sodium hypochlorite, it is even more obvious that the mesiobuccal portion of the floor must be examined in greater detail. I relieve some of the overlying dent with a number one Munspur, and after irrigation I clearly see a black groove that travels buccolingually along a line that is somewhat more mesial than the original chamber opening. I remove the overlying dent both mesially and distally along the length of this dark groove and follow with more irrigation. The dark groove is now more evident and I start to explore this highly oval space with 08 reamers. As you can see, the groove uncovered with the Munspurs provides space for the placement of three remits. We have not determined yet whether or not these are three independent canals, or rather a long, thin, oval sheet of tissue that is simply providing for three openings to place the instruments. I should have blown the moisture out of the orifice in the mesiobuccal portion. Nevertheless, you can distinctly see the 08 rema entering each of the three openings in the mesiobuccal portion of the pulp chamber. To sum up, the ability to recognize the roof of the pulp chamber and then completely remove it gives us the ability to have a full view of the floor, giving us in turn a greater opportunity to remove any degenerative calcific structures we encounter. In this case, a large pulp stone, an overlying dent, particularly in the mesiobuccal portion of the floor. Excellent illumination and magnification make this possible. With clear vision, the procedural stress is minimized because we know exactly where we have to go and how to get there. Please don't always expect to find an MB1, MB2, and MB3, but be prepared to look for them under relaxed conditions.